Zapito elaborates on how the young inns are naturally born with an open door between life and death, while the Muins have it open only in certain conditions. She remarks how Jiam Ryung is rather different, but that doesn't change the situation that no one knows how to open it in the first place. Just when she is about to finish her sentence, she starts floating and suddenly realizes that someone might be lurking in the distance as if her senses could detect someone. On the other hand, Dorothy is still logging into the game, and she feels like she is moving through the clouds and recounts it as the best feeling in the world. Instead of being brave and mighty, she decides to play it slow and lays flat on the ground and for her actions, Jiam Ryang and Zapito praise her almost instantly as she figures out that something is wrong in the air. Zapito remarks how someone might be trying to ambush Jiam Ryang, even though they know that there is no way Jiam Ryang will lose. Even so, he is not in a condition to defeat someone if the opponent is someone remarkable. Suddenly, Dorothy starts hearing the noises made by the monsters, and she thinks of finding a lamp as soon as possible as it will be necessary. Just as they continue to bicker about what they are about to do, and if GM Ryang is about to fight alone, they start sensing someone else's presence at the same time, making it feel even more dangerous. Just when the enemy gets in front of GM Ryong, he realizes that he knows the person ahead of him, and he senses how he changed over time. Cho Sik is literally grinning his teeth in anger, all while Jiam Ryong keeps on speaking about how he is in a down state, so he might need twice the amount of strength to defeat someone like him. When the battle is about to begin, and the walls of the monastery halls start to get crushed, Dorothy and Zepito both arrive beside him to help him out in this fight, and remark that there are more enemies other than one. Then when Dorothy finally looks at the enemy, she realizes that this person is none other than Jukun Chan, but she is unable to believe how he is in this state as it doesn't match her previous inspection. Suddenly, the enemy screams and starts rushing toward them, but it seems that Zepito is the one who kicked her in the face. Dorothy gets mad after being kicked in the face and starts shouting, all while Jakun Chan is clashing on the ground and breaking through it with his bare fists. Despite being kicked in the face, Dorothy realizes that she has to keep her calm in this situation since she is the elder sister in this position. When the destruction keeps growing, Dorothy wonders if this person ahead of him really Jakun Chan in the first place, as there is no way someone like him could become this strong like a beast. At that moment, Jiam Ryong mentions that he is similar to him, and a guy wearing pure white clothing interrupts the battle, adding that he is disappointed. As the man in white comes out of the shadows, both Dorothy and Zapito are surprised and Jiam Ryong asks the man about his identity as he doesn't seem to have any knowledge about him. The man claims that his name is Yoon Un Jail, but people seem to call him Manbak Gomja, and he mentions how he doesn't seem to have that many skills. But he seems to be in charge of the Union's general affairs. After hearing him speak, GM Ryong seemed to be interested in saying something, but he couldn't utter the words using his mouth for some reason. At the same time, Manbak Gongja claims that it is rather normal for GM Ryong to be uncomfortable while using this language since he is not a young in. While mentioning the Miram Alliance, Manbak claims that he is someone who serves the Ten Heavenly Kings. Even though Jiam Ryong doesn't seem to point out through the words of the man, Dorothy catches the details and asks the man if he is the same person who wrote the secret book of Miram, the same person who gathered the Ten Masters, and even created the Union and the true leader of the Union. After hearing Dorothy mention his name in the most profound way, Manbak decides to hide the pride away, mentioning that he simply just assisted them with his utmost sincerity. But Dorothy is not about to take that rather simply. She knows how hard it was for him to manage all of them together to stand and fight against the same enemy. But Manbak still gives all the credit to the ten heavenly kings no matter what. While speaking with Manbak, she begins to wonder what is actually happening in the background as she herself is rather shocked by this predicament. On the other hand, when GM Ryong starts speaking, she realizes that the man standing beside him is becoming rather genuine after hearing about Manbak as if he could sense the importance. When GM Ryong questions the man about his intentions, he jumps out of the roof to get down on the ground while adding that he only came to escort him. He mentions that the attacks on the seventh floor of the demon castle have been blocked because of the many trials, and despite all the attempts of the ten heavenly kings, it seems still too early to even destroy it, so they are now waiting for the right time. Manbak also seems to know that some low and nameless Moonpas have been bothering him all this time and mentions that they might be able to find a possibility to enter the eighth floor for the first time. 
promising that the Alliance will fulfill any kind of dream that he has, Manback requests GM Ryan to get into the Alliance together as soon as possible. Just when Dorothy seems to be out of her mind hearing all the details, she seems rather annoyed, and Manback mentions that they have prepared enough compensation considering the discovery of the Golden Dragon, and he feels like it is something they might wish. While speaking, he even mentions that the executive manager position in the Ten Heavenly Kings is available as well which surprises Dorothy almost instantly. Just when she seems too much into the lust for power, Zepito starts holding onto her shoulders, knowing that they have more to gain by being with Giam Ryan. Dorothy decides to calm her nerves and decides not to be swayed by power or position, and she remarks that there is no way she will be able to trust man back in this situation. Dorothy thinks that it is rather obvious since he managed to follow them all in this place, and even thought of approaching them secretly, which doesn't make any sense if he really needed GM Ryan's help. But Manback backs up his claims by saying that all the Alliance members went undercover near Yang Mok to keep watch, and he was the one who came in to inspect after receiving some information from Gibang. Manback then adds that he used a very special skill on him. In order to chase them, he needed to use a tracking skill and another skill that could bring forth of their hidden energy. When Manback begins to talk shit about Jokun Chan, Dorothy feels like the guy must be an asshole as there is no way he could treat someone like that and then talk shit about them afterward. Even though she wanted to say it in front of the man instead of calming herself, she knows that she has to stay silent anyway since she is rather weak and little compared to him in the first place. When she leaves the choice to GM Ryan, GM Ryan begins to speak as if the offer made by him isn't really satisfactory, and even though Manback is ready to offer anything else, GM Ryan declines the offer almost instantly. When Manback asks Jiam Ryang about the reason why he had to reject the idea in the first place, he mentions how Manback never mentioned what he wanted from him. Instead of speaking more of the seventh floor, Manback asks Jiam Ryang why he is thinking of rejecting the offer instead of agreeing to it. Jiam Ryang mentions that after leaving the seventh floor, he learned something from his guide. He mentions that there is no way humans wouldn't ask for something in return if they do each other a favor. But since Manback didn't say what he would want in exchange, it didn't fit right with him. Remarking that there is no way this is a fair trade, it only makes sense to him that Manback is intentionally hiding something from them. When Manback thinks that it is some useless reason to reject his offer, GM Ryan insists that it is enough of a reason to decline the offer and Dorothy starts praising GM Ryan for being smart as she didn't expect him to say something like that. Knowing that speaking and wasting more time with Manback wouldn't do any good to them, Dorothy pushes GM Ryan to move on, adding that the deal is over. But instead of accepting the reality, Manback lightens up in his own strength and mighty and starts to threaten them all. As Manback reveals some important details in front of them, Dorothy realizes that the guy has been following GM Ryan from day one which doesn't seem so suitable to her. When Manback continues to blabber about GM Ryan not being able to use his own divine powers, Dorothy opens his mouth to make him face the reality that even Jakun Chan couldn't make it happen. Dorothy hides under one of the huge rocks and asks GM Ryan to deal with Manback, and Manback begins to showcase his strength after praising Dorothy for her willpower. As lightning particles continue to fall from the sky, Dorothy realizes that they are not supposed to miss and GM Ryan realizes that the guy is shooting fan arrows. While holding one of the arrows in his hand, Manback mentions that GM Ryong is about to have the most refreshing experience after getting out of the seventh floor this time for sure. While unveiling his spirit lightning strikes, Manback mentions that even someone like Dorothy can be able to distinguish this skill, but she is already flabbergasted because of the chilling environment. As Manback surges even more power into the strikes, GM Ryong begins to feel a lot of pressure surrounding him as he begins to get electrocuted. As Dorothy watches this happening, she is unable to believe that GM Ryong is alright, and GM Ryong mentions that he is fine as he continues to hold on into the middle of the boundaries of the spirit electrocution. Even though he cannot move his body properly, he notices the system information revealing in front of him, and he continues to watch the screen for a while now. On the other hand, Dorothy is unable to believe that he cannot move even for a bit from his position, as she knows that the attack might be flashier, but it is still a low-class skill at this point. Suddenly, Zepito comes out of nowhere beside her and mentions that it is related to mind control. 
Dorothy thought she might have fled after seeing the danger, but Zepito mentions that there is no way she would be able to leave Jim Ryang in this situation. When Manback starts using his powers once again, the timer resets and Jim Ryang realizes that there is no pain or shock in his body, it is just that he cannot move his body like before. Just when Jim Ryong feels like something is wrong, Manback begins the mind control, and even though chances were really low for this, he somehow managed to do this in this case. While speaking, GM Ryong finally loses his sight, and even though it was supposed to go horribly wrong, he manages to resist the mind control. On the other hand, Zepito mentions that there is no way the spirit lightning strike was ordinary and mentions that the power is considered to be right under the ten heavenly kings. Even Zepito believes that if this situation continues, GM Ryong might face even worse things from here, unless he is able to conquer his barriers. When Manback is on the way to succeeding, Dorothy comes out of nowhere holding her weapon, insisting that he should stop and get away from GM Ryong. Just when she thinks that she is successful in defeating him, he appears out of nowhere and Zepito mentions that she managed to increase his vitality even more. At this time, Manback asks her to come with him as well and Zepito starts lashing out at Manback instead of wasting her time. She manages to slice his face with her strike and blood starts dripping from his face, remarking that the gear is nothing normal and Zepito looks as fearless as ever as she readies herself for the battle. But Zepito is so fiercely ready that she doesn't really lose out on the chance of calling him a dog as she gets into it.